G'day, welcome back to another video. This is going to hopefully be a quick how-to on how to make yourself a joystick adapter for a Spectrum Plus 2. Now, for the uninitiated, the joy two joystick ports on the side of the Plus 2 are proprietary. Essentially, all the signals are the same uh, as the Atari standard, also known as the Kempston standard, but all the pins are in a different order. Now, there's a couple of different ways you can go about this. There's a great how-to online, and I'll put a link in the description, on actually rewiring the ports on, on the motherboard. Uh, you can buy adapters. Uh, last time I looked, I think they were about £12 each, um, which for me, being in Australia, is a long time to wait and kind of adds up with the exchange rate. Or you can make one. Now, there's a couple of different ways of making it. You can use a regular DB9 connector, which is my first attempt that you can see here. The downside is, is the plugs tend to start getting a bit big and chunky. And so, especially at the computer end of it, you need to really cut down the size of the plug. And the reason for that is, on the side of the spectrum, where the ports are, the case actually sits very, very close to the port. So you've got no space for anything other than just the plug. So I had a bit of a think about it and realized that the local J car had um, what are called IDC connectors, uh, basically DB9 connector, but it's an IDC connector on the back of it. What's an IDC connector, you ask? It's a ribbon cable connector exactly the same as you would have on a floppy drive or a IDE hard drive connector. Uh, and they simply work by having a whole bunch of teeth that pinch through the, the insulation of the wiring uh, to make contact. Uh, you put the clamp on the back um, and there you go, you've wired your plug. It's not quite that simple, but that's essentially the, the nutshell version of it. Now, the actual wiring that I'm going to use, I will uh, put up in an image now. But I'll also put a link down in the des description. I'll put it up on Google or something like that so people can find it. So, the way this works is... And let me just get some terminology out of the way because I'm going to screw this up otherwise. I'm going to call this the socket. I'm also going to refer to it as the joystick end because that's simply where the joystick plugs in. While I'm going to simply call this the plug, the female one I'm going to call the plug or alternatively the computer end because that's the end that goes into the computer. So what are you going to need? You're going to need uh, a male and female DB9 uh, IDC connectors. You're going to need some flush cutters. Well, I prefer flush cutters. Uh, a pair of pliers is always, a small pair of pliers is always handy. Some insulation tape and some scissors. Optionally, also, it's handy to have uh, a good craft knife, Stanley knife, whatever you want to call it, and a small flathead screwdriver. And either a bench vise or something along the lines of, I use a pair of multi-grips um, because they were literally sitting on my desk when I started working on this. Now, I have actually already made one. If you want to jump to the end, this is essentially what they look like here. That's uh, one that I built last night. Um, and so, yeah, that's what it will end up looking like. So, let's get started. Right, we're going to start at the computer end. Um, this is our DB9 IDC connector. Uh, and we're simply going to lay it in what you do is you simply, I, this is the way I do it, there's different ways of doing it. I lay it in like this, and because of the way it ends up wrapping around, I will call this the top. We'll bring, well, I start by bringing the cable in from the top like so. And these two bits here, this bit I call the clamp, and this is the strain, this bit's the strain relief. Just put that to a side for a second. And simply start by putting the clamp in part way and what you want to do is you want to look down I don't know if you know how well you're going to be able to see this but you're going to want to look down down the end and make sure that the wires are lined up as best you can with the teeth down inside 
And essentially what you want to do is once it's all lined up, you want to push down and get it started so it can't move. This is when we take either put it in a vise or grab our trusty set of multi-grips and go in. Get it in there and press down and it will go click. And that's it. That is that and done. Simple as that. Um, I at this point would normally then take a set of flush cutters and trim off that end. Problem solved. Now, length. Well, that's really kind of up to you, but I kind of like, it's one of those things, the shorter you make it, the more fiddly it's going to do. So especially first time around, do yourself a favor and have some length. This is just, by the way, this is just simply um, ribbon cable. Uh, I like using the rainbow stuff because it makes it easier for me to keep track of which way is which because I can just work by color. Um, and I just get this, I get, I always have some of this because the individual strands are handy and I just get it from JK. So let's take a length of, I think that's roughly 10 or 12 centimeters, that'll do. And trim that off. There we go. Now, this is where we want to start playing musical wires. And what we want to do is we want to start by, we need to separate all the individual strands. And I do this, you can get your nail in there and peel them off, and most of the time that does work, but I find it useful to actually use a good set of flush cutters and actually just snip at the tip of each gap in the wiring. I missed one because I'm concentrating on the camera and not on what I'm doing. And just, it basically gives you an easy start to all of these. Now, what you want to do is you want to take each one and you want to peel back about, what's that, about four centimeters, inch and a half for anyone in America. And you want to get them all down to about that length. So let me just go ahead and do that. All right, that's now done. Kind of stretch them back out to, well, straight uh, at least. Now, you've got to remember that the joystick connector actually only uses six wires, and we've got all nine here. The reason for that is twofold. One, it's easier to put all nine into the end of this one and simply clamp down. It also makes it a lot easier to do your musical wires at the top when you've got all gaps filled, so all nine, all nine spots. So what we do now is we take, this is the way I do it at least, we take some insulation tape and we get our scissors and we just cut a length. Now this actually isn't going to be in the finished product, but we just want to keep that handy. What we want to do now is we want to put start putting these in order to what we want. So looking at my diagram, which I have just off camera, I want to go brown, orange, red, purple, and the screen of my computer just turned off. Where are we? Red, purple, blue. Did I forget to separate those? No, I didn't. Blue. So purple, blue. Now, the next one we actually don't care about. It's a gap. So I'm just going to go yellow. Then we want gray, which is a proper one. Uh, and then the last two don't really matter. So we're going to just go green and white. What we want to do is we want to make sure that try and keep all the twists kind of down here and get to a point where they're all sitting flat like this. And to make life a little easier, we're now going to take a little bit of insulation tape and I'm just going to stick them there. And basically you want to have the insulation tape sitting, so I've done that too close to the twists. 
and we want to get this sitting flush, flat, however you want to put it, like this here, with basically enough gap between the twists and the insulation tape that we can put a plug with the wires in the right order. All right, so we just put that there for a sec. We now get our joystick end, our male end, our socket end, depending on how you want to put it. And we want to put this down. Now, the way I've done the order of these is we look at the top of the plug, rotate it around, and lie your wires in like this. And hopefully, they should all sit something like that. We now want <clears throat> our clamp, which is going to walk about. There it is. And we want to get it in one click. It's going to make a liar out of me. Right. Once that's kind of in place, we can now take another look and making sure all our wires are sitting neatly next to each other, sitting straight in the plug. Uh, and a bit like the first one, we can push down so they can't move around anymore. Now, this is where it's a little trickier. We can't just use the multi-grips because as you clamp down, you will actually crush this metal shielding. Uh, and we need the metal shielding. We, on this end, we can't get rid of it. The other end we'll come to in a minute. So what you need to, you've got a couple of options. You can either find a disposable female end, something you don't care about, put it in and clamp down, or you can simply just put it down on the bench and push for all it's worth. Now with a microphone and a camera in my face, I'm not going to be able to do that. So I'm going to go the other route and simply put that in there, open up your pliers wide enough and hopefully there we go, it went clip clip, and we're in. And they all seem to be sitting nicely. Now, we're not going to do any more trimming just yet. We need to turn our attention back to the computer end of this. These tabs on the side here are going to foul on the side of the computer. So that all has to be removed. It's actually not that hard. On this one at least, they're simply clamped around the plastic and we don't actually need this at this end. So we take our small set of pliers, which everyone should have, and simply bend forward on one side and as you can see it's unclipped itself and around the other side and that should simply come off and that we don't care about anymore. That there is pretty much ready to plug into there. This end once you get rid of that. This end, not so much. The problem is you can't get rid of these wings because it's all part of the shielding that goes around the edge here. We can't get rid of that shielding because otherwise we simply leave the pins exposed and they'll get bent. They simply will. What we want to do now though is before we go any further, we want to test this. Primarily, now you could do this with a with um uh, a multimeter um, you'll probably want to stick a pin or something down in each of these because you won't get the terminal of the multimeter in there and you can go through and you can test all your wiring but if you do that or not I still highly recommend you simply plug it into your machine as it is with an Atari joystick plugged in um, and we can do some tests from there so let me get that set up and we'll go from there Right, so I've simply booted my uh, Plus 2 up into 128K Basic and the joystick's plugged in. Now, the thing with the Sinclair joystick port is all it actually does is replicate keystrokes. So it makes testing really simple. So, joystick in hand, you should get the following. Up is 9, down is 8, left is 6, right is 7, and fire a zero. Simple as that. Up, down, left, right, zero. There you go. 
the joystick is working. I would also like to point out that I uh, also use Gauntlet as a test, A, because I, it's a game I love, and B, from the very get-go, uh, you can move in all four directions and fire. So that's another way of doing it, of course. Um, don't get me wrong, this also works perfectly fine in 48K Basic as well, if you just give me a sec. Up, down, left, right, fire. And there we go. All right. Back to the adapter. All right, we're back to the adapter. Here we are, just as we left it before we tested it. And the next bit's really just a case of finishing it off. Take your flush cutters and trim off the excess from the joystick end uh, where the tape was holding it together. And all we need to do now is put on the strain reliefs. And this is just a simple case of folding it over and clipping the strain relief on the back. Now, the joystick end one might be a little tricky because that's where all the twists are. As you can see, it's gone a bit funny, so we can pop this off. Easiest way to pop these back off, I find, is actually with the top of a knife. You want to be careful not to break them because otherwise you're starting from scratch again. It's going to make a liar out of me. Right. Trying to keep this straight. Don't do what I just did. And we simply put the strain relief on. And we're straight. And we do the same for the computer end. This one's obviously a lot more straightforward because the wiring here is dead straight. But make sure it's all neat and put it on. And there we have one Atari to Spectrum 2 joystick adapter. And now I have two. And they almost ended up the same length. So I hope you found that useful. Um, click like subscribe yada 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 um and yeah now you'll be able to use decent joysticks on your plus two